So everyone knows that analog gear is superior. I mean, if you're dropping thousands of dollars, you have to justify your purchase. Waste of money? No! Of course there's a good reason why this amp and cab cost more than the latest smartphone. Why would you want to use the latest technology anyway? Tube TVs, VHS tapes, those are superior too. Come on guys, digital is here to stay with infinite possibilities, not just cheaper possibilities. It's time to not be afraid of new techniques and sounds. Let's even see if we can find some interesting tones taking away not only the analog gear, but the software used to emulate them as well. This is Kevin from Said Too Much. So I'm running my baritone guitar through my Line 6 Helix, which is an amp sim on its own and what I use for low latency monitoring, but I always record the unprocessed DI signal into my DAW and reamp with the Helix software version to make any tweaks in the plugin itself, as well as already running some other plugins even before going into that. So let me quick record a riff I can loop while bypassing my go-to amp sim this time. Okay, so if we just started adding some standard EQ, compression, delay, and reverb, we'd start getting some pretty nice clean tones already. Which is something, honestly, I've done a couple times. Skipping an amp sim. But the most basic of analog signal chains ends up in an amp head, which adds gain distortion, some minor EQ, and slight limiting in various forms depending on the model. I'm going for a high gain rock metal tone anyway, so let's load up some distortion and gain plugins I use. First maybe an L1 limiter for more gain. Then we've got a wave shaper I like for some of that distortion. There's this other distortion plugin I mess with too sometimes. So definitely not really sounding like a guitar tone right out the gate. A little fizzy and chaotic. That's because on top of an amp pad, a staple of all guitar tones is that filtering certain cabinets and microphones add. So maybe some filtering through an EQ can do us some good. Something similar to a wider kind of band pass, like the telephone effect kind of thing. I know Ozone has an even more advanced EQ match feature we can use too. Matching the input of my standard distorted tone setting by applying an inverse EQ difference on top of what we have with the raw distortion. So EQ wise, that should be pretty similar to the filtering my standard cabin mic simulation does. There are actually more detailed plugins similar to maybe something like this that I also could have used called Convolvers. They're actually meant to simulate room reverbs and filterings, but could also simulate cabin mic reverb and filtering, which they're often used to do. Alright, pretty simple so far, but maybe we can add some other digital effects to find something more unique. Already that less detailed filtering configuration makes the tone more digital, and I kind of like the harsher frequencies in the right setting. It sounds more like an electronic instrument, and matches the raw distortion a lot of electronic and hip-hop music producers add to instruments. Or even vocals sometimes, like at the end of Kanye's song, Runaway. Now maybe we could add a bit of formant filtering too, to give it more of that vocally dubbed up bass sound. Okay, enough of this loop. I think we have a pretty nice setup to start messing around with other riffs.
So if you don't think it sounds that great yet, we could just start recording doubles and trying it out in a full mix. If this new tone is still too extreme and different for you, the advantage of routing around the DI in a DAW is all the parallel signal chains we can add. Like we can blend a regular amp sim tone back in, or any other tones you could think of. Digital is filled with more possibilities, and I guess I'm always going to be an advocate of it over just pure analog. And to control all this opportunity, I've been using this MIDI controller called the MIDI Commander. The good people over at Mellow Audio sent me one to talk about, and it's definitely a permanent part of my rig now. It's simple to use, just straight into your PC through USB. It could also be used to control rack mount amp sims slash modelers like the Kemper or Fractal, using a direct MIDI output and being internally powered. With the multitude of plugins to sort, this has been quite useful. I had looked into other MIDI foot controllers in the past, but a lot of them looked pretty fragile and plasticky. This commander guy is very sturdy with solid metal switches and an aesthetic to even match my helix. I'm not worried about kicking this little guy around. There's two spots to add your favorite expression pedals too if you wanted. They've also got a version of this MIDI controller with a built-in interface for the DI guitar signal and some mic inputs. So in theory, your live slash jamming rig could be as simple and potentially affordable as that, plus a laptop with the favorite plugins you already use on it. Just thought I'd give them a quick shout out. If you want to know more, I'll put some links in the description. So what do you all think? Obviously, I love the tones that amp sims already give us, but is there room for these in-box, thinking outside the box kind of sounds? Sure, maybe some of your favorite tones come from a piece of analog gear that software hasn't been able to truly replicate yet. And that's fine, but I just don't think analog is purely superior. Technologies are always improving, and something cheap, easy to use, and good sounding will allow people to start learning guitar. Digital isn't killing the heart of the electric guitar, it's what's keeping it alive and will make it more approachable. We need new guitar players and people that will join the creative frontier in finding new and interesting sounds. For now though, enough said. For downloads, raw instrument tracks, and more exclusives, find our community on Patreon and consider adding your support. Said too much!